my name is oh, good morning everybody good morning from brazil uh, my name is João Jarski. I'm a, I am a lawyer here at São Paulo uh, at the Clase and Clase Casado Filho law firm, and um, I was also a former intern at Unidroa, where I researched about uh, cultural heritage and the protection of works of art. So uh, I'd like to make first and foremost, I'd like to make a special thanks to our guests, Miss Lika Spav Spivakovska and Mr. Gio Magri, they're here to talk with us about uh, NFTs and the protection of art and uh, the protection of the cultural heritage. And also special thanks to the International Law Association for making this event possible, for organizing everything and providing all the support needed. And also special thanks to the, uh, to the Pernambuco Bar Association, to the University of, Federal University of Paraíba, and also to the CMT, which is the Carvalho, Machado and Tim uh, law firm. So uh, I'd like to, to initiate this conversation by uh, just saying that uh, NFTs is a, is a subject, is a theme that is quite in the spotlight nowadays. Uh, we have all seen, we are all discussing not only lawyers and uh, artists or software engineers are talking about NFTs, but also uh, actually everybody's commenting on it. Uh, we have all seen famous basketball players, famous football players uh, purchasing NFTs and perhaps making money out of it or losing money out of it. And uh, everybody's just curious to know what is an NFT? Uh, is it secure? Is it safe? How can I buy an NFT? How can I make an NFT? What's the use of an NFT? So, of course, all of those questions will be addressed during this lecture. So, Ms. Lika uh, Spiv Spivakovska, sorry, this name is, is quite different for us, but Ms. Lika yes. Spivakovska, she's a, a former art gallerist at Ukraine, and she had a brilliant idea, uh, quite remarkable actually, on how to protect uh the ukrainian artists by using the nft technology and geo magri mr geo magri is a lawyer in italy and a, prof a professor at the university of insubria and is also a specialist at the uh, nft technology intellectual property and work of art law and law and art in general so just before passing the words to our uh to our speakers i'd like to make just a brief uh, comment on the on the NFT, just to make sure that everybody is in the same page. So, and no NFT, a non fungible token, is actually an irreplaceable digital asset. If I can put it like this, so we can make a comparison here. If we have, for example, cash, money, uh, it doesn't really matter if I have two five dollars bill or one ten dollars bill. All, every cash is basically the same. So we can say that cash is a replaceable uh, physical asset. Now, on the other hand, let's say we, ha we have uh, a real estate. Um, it is, of course, it is quite different if I have this and that house or this and that apartment. In, this, in the same sense, it is different if I have a Picasso painting or a Dali painting, because in the end of the day, even if they have the same value, they are intrinsically different. So this is a uh, physical, re irreplaceable asset. Now, let's say, moving on, let's say you have uh, a Bitcoin, which is the cryptocurrency. Uh, one Bitcoin is just the same as one other Bitcoin. So they are, uh, they, are fun they are absolutely fungible. They're not different between one another. So this is a, uh, a fungible token, a fung fungible digital asset. Now, uh, last, if we have a uh, property over a digital work of art, we can all say, we can all agree that this is very specific and uh, this is a non-fungible digital asset, a non-fungible token. So basically this is an NFT. And uh, uh, what an NFT and Bitcoin or almost every cryptocurrency have in common is that they use the, bit, the blockchain technology. They operate through the blockchain. 
The blockchain is a technology to register with great uh, security, to register information. So the information is registered in a specific block. And as the property is being transferred between one person and another person and several uh, several people, this all this information will be uh, registered in several blocks of information. So this is why it is called the blockchain. So with this very brief notion of NFTs, I'd like to first uh, pass the word to Ms. Vika Spivakovska. As I said, she was she's a former uh, gallerist at Ukraine. She's now in uh, it is Be Belgrade. Belgrade. Be she's now in Belgrade because of what unfortunately happened in uh, in Ukraine. But she had a, just a remarkable idea on how to protect Ukrainian, uh, especially I think uh, uh, small Ukrainian artists in this in the beginning of their careers that happened to be in Ukraine when, when everything uh, happened. So Ms. Lika, can you tell us a little bit of your story, how you became uh, an art gallerist at Ukraine and uh, what happened uh, after the war began and how you had this, this idea that we are, we are all thrilled to, to know more about. Thank you very much for this very kind introduction. Uh, I really appreciate your interest in this subject. And um, I'm a gallerist in Ukraine for over more, for more than 10 years. I have two galleries there. Uh, one is working with the emerging artists and the other one is working with the established artists uh, who are sold on Sotheby's and Christie's and uh, etc. Unfortunately, when the war started and they started to bomb everywhere, we were all in shock. So um, the next uh, couple of hours I started to receive and I started to see on the Facebook feed uh, the announcements from my artists, from my friends, uh, that their studios are bombed and uh, so on. So, uh, you know, uh, when you work with artists for such a long time, they become your friends. And of course, my first thought was, how can I help them? What can I do? And my second uh, thought was, how can I, um, uh, how can I, um, how to say it, uh, um, how can I find this, uh, their art um, to be um, heritaged? Yes, to be to be uh, uh, heritaged. So. Uh, mm -hmm. My first thought was uh, how to help and uh, what can I do? And then I understand, I understood that if the works are bombed or somehow destroyed, what we can do is to uh, gather the pictures of the, of the uh, paintings or to do digital art and to make it an NFT. Later it began not just a gallery project, not just an NFT project. Uh, later, it began, it began to be somehow, I would call it an art media that we had an open sea platform. Because as you know, the first weeks of the war, nobody believed that the war was going on. Yes, uh, because of the news. And uh, we had to approve it. We had to prove it that there is something going on in this way. So uh, Facebook, Instagram and other social media, they started to ban uh, everything considering the war and uh, in the open sea by the uh, artists works, we could really show it. And it was very nice because uh, these works when we minted them, they um, uh, went to the blockchain and nobody could uh, ever uh, change this. Yes, nobody could ever change this or destroy these works as uh, so far as they are on blockchain now. So uh, uh, this was very nice choice for us, for me as a gallerist and for my artists to show our works, to show our pain by our, our works and to uh, maintain this cultural heritage of Ukraine that we had. 
So uh, very, very interesting. So this this was the first uh, contact that you had with with NFTs, or have you ever uh, experienced with digital art um, uh, before this event? Uh, actually, and yes and no, <laughs> because as for me, I'm a gallerist, but also I paint myself. And uh, as uh, soon as the NFT went out in the internet, I was wondering, I was curious, how does it work? And does it work at all? So I made my own profile on OpenSea with my, my personal art, artworks. But uh, for me, it didn't work. Uh, nobody wanted to buy my NFTs. So I started to wonder why, because I thought that they were just gorgeous. <laughs> they were just <laughs> super. <laughs> yes, so I started to study the subject. And then I understood that uh, it's not enough just to paint or to draw or to make digital art and to place it on the um, NFT platform like OpenSea or something else. Yes, but it is very important to maintain the marketing and to maintain them, uh, your profile and your artworks on the social media and uh, public relations and so on and so forth. Uh, so uh, when I came to this point and when I opened the gallery, which is called uh, Support Ukraine Gallery on OpenSea with this uh, artworks we have now, uh, by the way, they are, there are about... Uh, more than 500 artworks right now. We have three collections uh, and they are dedicated to some um, different aspects of, of what is going on. Uh, so uh, now I know that uh, it's not enough just to mint the work, but uh, it is very uh, useful to do the right marketing. And that's why I have my partners, uh, which is the digital agency of Ukraine, and they help me with the rest. So now I'm even on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Becoming famous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah this, this is quite good. Uh, and I, it, uh, I can remember what, not re remember, but I can resemble this with what happened in the World War II, for example, what several works of art were uh, destroyed, were lost, were stolen. Yes, and uh, in this in this case, not that it is uh, comparable, of course, but uh, what you are doing is basically uh, given a, a solution to a problem that otherwise wouldn't be wouldn't be so easily so solved. Yeah, yeah. solved. Yeah, solved. Uh, and what? How about the 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 physical assets, the physical works of art? Are those uh, protected somehow, or could you um, uh, take them out of the galleries and take somewhere else, somewhere somewhere else, or it would be in impossible to do something like this? Yeah, it was very very difficult in the beginning. Now, of course, on the fourth fourth months of the war, we have uh, some ways to to save the physical artworks. But uh, during the first months, uh, two months. We couldn't do that. Uh, so, and of course, partially some works are damaged or destroyed at all. So the NFT gives us the solution to uh, to save uh, the idea, the big idea of the work, and to maintain this um, cultural heritage. Quite very interesting. Uh, uh, at least, at least talking with. Uh, with a few of my friends, uh, their first uh, notion on, of NFTs that they have is that uh, it is like uh, use, useless picture, pic pixels on a screen. Like, what's the difference between an NFT and uh, and just an image that that you can basically print screen? And I think it is very different because uh, of just again comparing comparing with uh, physical works of art, you can have a replica of a, of a Picasso, of a Dali, uh, of any painter, you can have a replica of a Mona Lisa, but you you never, you, you can't have the original one, but it will cost a lot more. And uh, this in, in this sense that you are using the NFT, it is even more remarkable because you are not only uh, 
granting the property and, and registering ownership and securing uh, to whom it is transferred and securing the very existence of a work of art. Um, so this is very, this is, I think it was a brilliant idea. Um, current, you said currently you have 500 works of art and how many artists are, are in, this, in this partnership? I think I think she lost the connection. Mm. But yes. Uh, and anyways, her 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 idea was quite brilliant. Do you have any comments on the story, Joe? Yeah, it would be also interesting maybe for collectors this uh, solution because uh, one of the problem of uh, the art market is uh, to ensure ownership of a. Uh, digital uh, of our uh, artwork so maybe yeah. NFT even... could be a solution uh, like a register of uh, artworks that are uh, put in uh, commerce yes so, and even even combine both both the, yes the physical uh, painting or the physical work of art and yes. the nfc technology of course uh, first to to even to keep track of the of to whom it, the, it has been sold, to whom it has been it, is, it has been transferred, it would be a great idea to, to use this in a more even broader sense than she. Uh, that would she be brought. also a, a good question for uh, Lika, because uh, I read that many auction houses also start to think at the blockchain and the NFT. Uh, not only to make a new kind of art, but also to sell old masters and old art uh, in a sure way. Because the problem is uh, how to guarantee that the work is uh, came from the seller and uh, how to is possible to ensure that the buyer has really uh, both something. And also in case of uh, stolen works, it could be useful to have a register. Yes. So yeah, maybe absolutely. technology could be a good solution and the NFT technology in particular. I think most of the people have watched this movie. I think it is the, the Golden Lady in English, the name. Yes. Which was a case about ownership over, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the painter. Uh, but, uh, it was a property that was uh, like they, they lost track of the property over it after the World War II. And uh, also from uh, Klimt. Klimt, yes, indeed. Mm. Uh, so they lost track of the property over it, and there had to be an arbitration to solve it, almost, almost unsolve a problem because it was with a museum, and then there had to be an arbitration to uh, really uh, decide to whom. The, the the work of art really belongs. If you have an NFT to keep track of those of those issues, it would be quite really really helpful. Yes. So, unfortunately, we have to notice that Lika's devices are not connected. Uh, I don't know if she will. New uh, technologies make also yes. <laughs> solutions. <laughs> At the same time that they create many solutions, they also create some uh, some problems. As we now see, we, are, we all have to deal with this. Uh, it happens uh, with everyone every time. Yes, unfortunately. Okay, so Gio, I think we can move on to you. Uh, you, you as we were speaking here before this um, the presentations, uh, you you mentioned that you uh, you want us to talk about in a specific case. Yes. About N N NFTs. Yes, NFT. Mm. That it's uh, ugly discussed in Italy at the moment uh, because uh, museums started to make NFT from uh, their artworks. So, uh, first of all, thank you for the invitation to this conference. It's actually a great pleasure for me. And uh, as we said in my speech, I would like to reflect on uh, NFT and their use by museums to obtain financial uh, resources and uh, the, prom uh, the problems arising from this uh, use. First of all, it's important to understand what an NFT is. 
uh, you already said uh, something about it, but uh, we can uh, define the non-fungible tokens um, as a digital certificate based on a blockchain technology and aimed to identify in a unique, irreplicable and not um, replaceable way the ownership of a digital product. So for this reason is uh, the NFT very interesting also for artworks and in the art market. If we compare uh, NFT to cryptocurrencies, uh, which are replaceable, uh, NFT are not interchangeable in any way. So from a drawing to a GF, uh, pe uh, JPEG or a GIF, from a video to a text, anything can become an NFT. Um, tokens are not just uh, digital content. Uh, they grant also exclusive access to content and experiences in the metaverse, as well as in the real world, as well as representing a status symbol. Moreover, tokens are a creative tool to bring the mass market uh, closer to the world of the cryptocurrencies. So I think uh, that could be also interesting for the development of uh, not fungible tokens. Art with uh, NFT uh, transcends the value of the work it's, itself. Uh, what is the point of paying so much to have a JPEG image that someone else could make much better? Because that single JPEG becomes a pass to access an exclusive club, a world of benefits and privileges dedicated only to NFT uh, holders. And uh, at the same time, it represents a reasonable asset. Exclusivity is the password that the best describes NFT. NFT, in general, uh, will change the business world, generating new and uh, interesting mechanism of uh, supply and demand, but also of communication between an artist and its audience. NFT are a technology that uh, is in its first phase of implementation, but uh, that tomorrow will increasingly tend to spread with regard to abroad uh, services, such as, for instance, education, real estate, music, events, and naturally, art. With regard to art and cultural heritage promotion, NFT have also begun uh, to be used by museums to make income sources. And we know that museums have a problem with uh, finances, at least in Italy, and so they need more money. And in my speech, I would like to focus on the possibility of reproducing in high quality artworks stored in museums and selling them pro uh, NFT certification. This is a practice uh, uh, that is currently highly discussed uh, in Italy. The first case uh, in Italy in which a museum uh, allowed uh, an NFT copy of an artwork to be made concerns uh, the Uffizi Museums in Florence. In May uh, 2021, a digital reproduction of Michelangelo's uh, Tondo Doni, that's a masterpiece, uh, was sold for the amount of 240,000 uh, euros, euros. The work was a digital silk screen. This is how the work was presented. In other words, a unique copy of the work preserved in the Fizzi, which had both a material part, the material part was a screen with a ultra high definition digital reproduction, and a frame and crafted as a faithful physical reproduction of the frame of the paint and a NFT certificate. So we add a material part and a digital part. The reproduction of the Tondo Doni was uh, authenticated by NFT and the operation had been handled by the company Cinello, that is the uh, holder of a patent called the Digital Artworks Faithful High Quality Reproduction of Ancient Work of Arts. 
The operation has provoked uh, a widespread debate because uh, the controversy uh, arose um, from a television report and from uh, some articles uh, in the press. Uh, the Uffizi had obtained half of the income from the sale of the digital Tondodoni, net of expenses, so more or less 70,000 euros, euros. And in addition, the museum had made an agreement with Cinello to carry out a similar operation for other 40 works of art. So these 40 uh, works of art will be reproduced and sell both uh, in a material form and with NFT um, certificate. The uh, example had been followed by other Italian museums, which similarly reached the partnership agreement with Cinello. Uh, in short, the idea is to sell a reproduction of an artwork certified by the NFT to, oh yeah, uh, of course, interested collectors, and the museum simply grants the permission to reproduce the work. The main problem is that of the dissemination of reproductions. If the buyer ever decides to exhibit it, for instance, in a museum or in a gallery, can he do that without the museum permission? In essence, is there a danger of losing control on our heritage, cultural heritage, in a time when we are moving more and more toward the metaverse. The protocols of the commission appointed by the Italian Ministry of Culture to examine the case of the state museum's works reproduced digitally and sold through NFT um, technology state that the director of museum blocked the contracts entered into some into by some museums because they provided for the alienation of the reproduction of the asset while the unavoidable necessity is to have the state retain ownership of the reproduction so the problem for the ministry is uh, to ensure the ownership of the reproduction uh, the Uffizi uh, spoke uh, of uh, a debate uh, based on incorrect statements uh, contained in the press. Because, uh, uh, according to the, the director of the museum, uh, the journalist completely misrepresented the issue. In fact, the journalists have not understood, uh, of course, uh, according to the director of the museum, have not understood the basic technological and legal concepts that govern the production, dissemination, and commercialization of images of uh, cultural property, including those certified by uh, NFT technology. Uh, the Uffizi also reassures that the uh, agreement to make the reproduction uh, of the Tondodoni had been authorized by the Italian Ministry of Culture. According to the museum, uh, the rights on the artwork are not sold. The buyer has no authority to use the images uh, granted for exhibition or other unauthorized uses, and the cultural heritage remains in the hands of the Italian Republic. So, according to the museum, there is no risk to lose uh, the property, the ownership of the cultural heritage stored in the museum. The contract with Cinello explicitly uh, mentions the non-exclusivity of the concession in absolute compliance with the applicable regulations and without the need to public for public um, procedures. The company in charge of the reproduction does not pay any fee, but splits the revenue from the sale in half with the museum. It, mm, this kind of um, payment is more or less the same kind of payment for other uses, uh, other uh, reproductions. Um, in this case, the income for the museum are uh, higher than in other cases. Um, the person who purchased the, the reproduction of the Tondotoni and the associated NFT has been awarded in that uh, in addition to a tangible asset, a unique uh, transferable 
cryptographic file that contains information about the artwork that is a kind of this digital certificate of authenticity, authenticity of the artwork. Uh, the rights to the Tondodoni evidently do not pass to whoever buys the NFT. The NFT owner holds only a right to a reproduction of uh, Michelangelo's work. Uh, the problem is that nothing prevents another NFT copy of the work from being, from being transferred. Therefore, uh, it is also improper uh, to speak of NFT of a museum's work. It works. NFT are certificates of ownership to the digital work derived from the original preserved in museums. This is therefore why the Uffizi Cinello operation has um, uh, also saw uh, the production of a physical work of uh, uh, a digital copy of the Tondo Ton embedded in the faithful reproduction of the frame. Because the NFT is not itself a work of art, it, it is only a file that does not contain the work, and the Tondodoni produced by Cinello is therefore a unique work of art, quite distinct from the one everyone can admire in the Uffizi. Uh, of course, this is a new word of uh, pub, um, new word for public museums uh, that needs to be explored in terms of legal implication of transactions like the one involving the Uffizi and Cinello case. And for this reason, the Italian Ministry of Culture is beginning to study what to do. Um, the transposition of a uh, work and of an artwork uh, to NFT and the blockchain implies less freedom of action since the transfer of rights concerning NFT and not to the reproduced work. If you sell, for instance, the Tondodoni digitally, you assume the right on the NFT uh, that reproduces the work and not the copyright on the physical work. This is, uh, I think, quite clear. The difference is thin yet substantial. Uh, NFT works can be an additional income for museums and an heritage, uh, heritage enlightenment tool. So uh, uh, something that can, could be used to promote uh, Italian cultural heritage around the world. Uh, the cultural ministry, however, has asked all museums in Italy to stop because the sale of these rights opens up uh, scenarios that cannot be uh, yet controlled. And uh, it does not matter if the NFT are a source of revenue. What matters for the ministry is to protect, first of, of all, our uh, culture, culture and our art. Uh, which is the risk of an NFT uh, technology in concrete terms? The first risk could be that, uh, in fact, the reproduction will end up uh, on the metaverse and the fact that anyone, anywhere, can go and recreate his own museum with uh, Italian artworks. In fact, there is no danger of a museum losing ownership of the rights to the works. The moralistic risk concerns the loss of control over reproductions and always assuming that the NFT open up scenarios different from the current ones. Even now we see uh, the great masterpieces of Italian art from Michelangelo's uh, David to Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper uh, reproduced everywhere often without a permission, as also tested by recent uh, cases. Uh, in Italy, there are many cases uh, between uh, uh, people that reproduce artworks and uh, uh, the Italian state. Um, many laws regulate reproduction uh, rights. The main one is the Code of Cultural Heritage, which uh, regulates uh, reproductions of works of art in Articles 107 and 108. And then we have also a decree of the Ministry of uh, Economy and Finance from uh, 2021. Uh, these uh, rules contain a, sec um, a provision also on digital reproductions. Uh, in addition, there are also European directives in this field, and uh, um, 
the field is quite uh, um, regulated. So. Uh, to better assess the situation, uh, the Ministry, the Italian Ministry of Culture, in December established uh, December 2021, established a commission of experts that uh, is tasked to uh, study NFT and drafting the rules that will regulate uh, the sector, also the use of NFT in um, preservation and uh, reproduction of uh, artworks uh, stored by Italian museums. Uh, among practitioners, uh, there are uh, those who say they are very relieved that uh, the Ministry of Culture has decided to make to take stock uh, of the situation and possibly uh, give guidelines because it is a matter that cannot be left to individual interpretation. So they say we prefer that the, the Italian Ministry uh, say us, uh, tell us what we have to do. It is a big responsibility to disseminate through uh, these very sophisticated means images of planetary value that actually can also transit in a way that is controlled with great difficulty. So without blocking something that is very promising and also very fascinating, it seems that uh, um, the time has come to regulate uh, this uh, activity. Others... Uh, um, players, other directors of museums, uh, um, downplaying by believing that uh, the NFT that contained a high resolution image of um, the museum, of the works stored in museums, are nothing more than the looks toys, like the postcard, the magnets, the notebook and pencils that visitors take home as souvenirs. Uh, just as no one posed the problem of the vulgarization of culture for the image of Mona Lisa placed by Jeff Koons and Louis Vuitton on a handbag, likewise, no one should have posed the problem of a rich gentleman who hung around a frame with a television screen in which there is the image of Michelangelo Stondodoni. In fact, the Italian Cultural Heritage Code makes the reproduction of cultural property in the care of the Ministry of the Regions and other public entities subject to a concessionary measure, which is discretionary, but by the entity that has the property in its care. So it's the museums, in this case, to allow the reproduction of the artwork. Uh, the granting of the right of reproduction and the uh, determination of any rights of, uh, or fees for the reproduction is subject to uh, the evaluation of the intended uses, which must be uh, the subject of a declaration and a commitment by the applicant to the administration. As a general rule, the granting provision limits the further usability of the images. So you can reproduce the uh, the image uh, the, the work but you not, you cannot further use uh, the image to make other reproductions uh, the granting of an exclusive reproduction right is incompatible uh, with the provisions of uh, public law and legal regulations since it's a mere digital copy of a cultural asset without any creative contribution it cannot be considered a work protected but by copyright or even enjoy an autonomous and new right of reproduction. In other words, speaking from the Uffizi Galleries and NFT affair, we are talking no more and no less than beautiful postcards in high definition that are very, very expensive, but that are just postcards. Some uh, state museums director embrace the lean of caution. Uh, Cecil Olberg, for instance, that is director of the Galleria dell'Accademia in Florence, fears the risk of a black market in digital reproductions. In her opinion, at the basis of NFT, uh, there is always a digitalization of work, which is not done by the museum, it is done by an outsider, and who can guarantee uh, to the museum that these digitalized works will not be misused? 
there will be contracts naturally, but after a while, there could be a black market. The director, Miss Albert, um, does not feel guaranteed and thinks the solution risky for cultural heritage because if a third party digital digitalizes the artwork, it means that the museum no longer has control over its works. Luigi Gallo, that is the director of the Galleria Nazionale delle Marche, hopes for guidelines from the Ministry of Culture and training courses for museums on the topic of NFT and art. The General Directorate of Museums, uh, in his opinion, uh, did well, according to Mr. Gallo, uh, to put the brakes on this market and take time to uh, reflection. In short, NFT seem to offer many opportunities for museums in Italy, but at the moment, caution seem to prevail and the fear that uh, they will turn, that the NFT technology will turn into an impoverishment or a treat to our cultural, uh, of our cultural heritage is uh, uh, quite high among the fractioneers. So. Oh, thank, thank you, Gio. This is quite quite interesting, actually. Uh, the, the the relation between uh, uh, the, the physical uh, work of art and the digital one, and uh, we see more and more. For example, uh, that, that the NFTs are more and more of an international concern because <coughs> apologies, because in the end of the day. Uh, the blockchain technology knows no boundaries, right? So uh, NFTs are almost that intrinsically of an international concern. I I see that you mentioned a couple of uh, legal uh, instruments in Italy and in the European uh, Union uh, that, that regulate the transfer of digital property. But do you think that on a more international perspective, on a, on a more worldwide perspective, it would be good to have something regulated specifically uh, NFTs? Or do you think this would be like more internally regulated? The problem is that we need a uh, regulation, um, but uh, um, the market, the NFT market, is not a, a national or regional market, it's an international market. So uh, we have the same problem with uh, new technologies. Uh, new technologies are borderless, and uh, regulation is um, a state regulation or a regional regulation, for instance, in European Union. So uh, to regulate is uh, maybe useful, but uh, with new technology for me is not uh, um, the best solution. Maybe with this technology will be the market to make the rules, but not uh, the legislator, because uh, the problem is uh, the market is uh, open and worldwide and... Uh, yes. So, uh, in this case, for instance, for museums, you can make rule because uh, you have in your state, uh, your, um, in your country, all the works, and you can say you can make an NFT copy or not. You can decide. Mm -hmm. But uh, for NFT and new technologies, uh, to make a regulation is uh, something a uh, little bit risky. Yes. Something risky and new. <clears throat> Yes. Even because it is a very new uh, market indeed, and uh, we don't actually know what would be the most efficient way to regulate those issues. Maybe if we let the market be free and operate on a, on a, on a laissez-faire actually basis and understand what would be the, uh, the, the role of NFTs and the physical properties in each specific case would be best. Or maybe even in a, if in a couple of uh, months or a couple of years, we could have some, at least some um, guidelines, for example, or best practices, rules of conduct, some, uh, uh, something on the this, this, uh, this soft law sense. To... Soft law could be the, a good solution. Yes. Of course, yeah, there but... are big risks because uh, blockchain and NFT 
have also some problems <laughs> with uh, transparency, with uh, <laughs> anonymate, uh, and so there are risks. That's sure, but yeah. uh, so we need a regulation. The problem is uh, how this regulation will be made by the law or by soft law or other means. And your 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 lecture, uh, Mr. Gio, actually resembles what uh, the project of Ms. Lika also. Uh, Ms. Lika, I, I was just just before you your internet went out. I was just asking. Uh, uh, in, in the way that the pro your project is now structured, you have both only digital, uh, only NFTs and the, the, the physical uh, art or work of art, or you can have just one or the other. Uh, we have three collections. Um, the, one coll uh, the first collection started uh, on the second day of war. And uh, when I wrote on Facebook uh, for my artists to provide their art, their photos of their artworks that we been destroyed and so on and so far, I couldn't even uh, uh, knew that uh, they would do some new art. And they did it in the bomb shelters during the missile, missile attacks and sirens. And they did it just in basement uh, with uh, the help of everything they had. So it was uh, iPhones or iPads or even pencils and pens. Uh, uh, and uh, with, uh, within five, five or six hours, I started to receive uh, more and more children works. While they were sitting in the bomb shelters, their parents told them just draw to calm down yes so uh, the first collection consists of uh, not only of the uh, works of the artists professional artists but also is very uh, charitable yes it's uh, about people at all and uh, the second collection is very interesting because the second collection was uh, made uh, by uh, uh, by our ukrainian uh, fashion artists who participated in uh, Fashion Week uh, in Latvia, Riga, uh, with uh, their NFT clothes, uh, which they showed for Metaverse. So the second collection consists of the clothes, uh, NFT clothes for Metaverse and the Meta Fashion Week, uh, and it is very interesting too. And the third collection consists of uh, the works uh, which are made now, and it's about that the war um, still goes on and uh, we asked our artists to show their feelings and to show what uh, they think uh, and what they feel about it so you can visit the gallery and you will see the three different collections and uh, they all have their um, inner uh, senses yes it's quite interesting to see how those technologies arise and develop and how they can uh, democratize, like uh, broaden the access, not only to, to the, the, the work of art itself, but also to people making the works of art. Um, for me, it is quite amazing. So, Ms. Lika, where can uh, the viewers find those works of art? How can, they, how can they reach you in your social media, in your... Uh, in, in Inst on Instagram, Twitter, you said I had an account. What is your yeah? Yeah, I'm very open. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Lika Spivakovska, Instagram, Lika Spivakovska, YouTube, Lika Spivakovska, Twitter, Spivakovska, <laughs> and LinkedIn, Lika Spivakovska. So you just uh, tap in the name I have here, and I'm yes. sure you will find me. And uh, the gallery's name is Support Ukraine Gallery. It's on Open Sea, so you can find it. I know that there are several uh, galleries with uh, very common names because it's uh, just a slogan that uh, all Ukrainians use uh, about supporting Ukraine. Yes. So you can find the links on my uh, bios and uh, my uh, information in the social media. Oh, good. I certainly look look for that. Now, how about you, Dio? How can people find your, your, your work, your studies, your articles? I am on uh, Academia, also mm -hmm. Academia Edu, Geomagri, and also um, website of my university, uninsubria.eu. Uh, 
Yes. And I, of course, you can send me an email if you need something, something uh, from Italy. My email address is geo.magri at uninsubria.it. And uh, I will be happy to answer you. Oh, good, good. I certainly reach for you too. Um, well, do, do you have any final comments, any final statements, do you have final observations that you want to make? See that sure. you're running out of time. I have a question for Lika. Um, yes, please. Do you think that uh, NFT and blockchain, uh, we discussed about this topic uh, before when uh, your <laughs> connection was. Yeah, I'm sorry late. for that. No problem, it happens. Uh, my question was, uh, um, do you think that uh, NFT and blockchain technology could be useful also for uh, collectors to grant their uh, collection? So, uh, for instance, I buy uh, um, Caravaggio paint or um, paint, and uh, I am afraid that someone come by me and steal the work. So, uh, if I register the hard work in the blockchain, I will be uh, the property, uh, the, the owner of the. Um, yeah, of the you will be the thing. owner, but you will not be the author if it is Caravaggio. Yes, but uh, yes. it would be uh, uh, there will be a certificate that say that I'm the owner, and um, for the other buyers, I have a proof that I was the owner. So, I think that this is a very nice instrument for all, uh, uh, mostly the contemporary art and contemporary artists, uh, because I don't, uh, I don't think that uh, it is very useful for Caravaggio because uh, it is all, uh, it is uh, the cultural heritage of the museums uh, itself. Yes. Yes. Okay. Caravaggio is maybe. Too... Yes. 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 <laughs> but uh, we can but imagine. Other... Uh... A painter that is not so known and uh, yeah, yes, no? yes. I think that for contemporary artists, uh, for very uh, mm. expensive contemporary artists, it is very useful. And also, we have this uh, uh, service in my galleries. We had this service in my galleries in Kiev. Uh, so our um, artists, uh, when providing the work, when showing up uh, this work on the exhibition, they also registered it in the blockchain as an author. And mm -hmm. soon, as soon as the collector buys, uh, the rights uh, go uh, to the collector. So yes. you can uh, see all the paths from so, the So, uh, the Suite will be also facilitated by blockchain. Because uh, you can trace... Uh, yeah, events. you can trace uh, the, all, all the paths from the author to the collectors. The and uh, it, it helps very much. I don't yeah. know how it uh, is regulated in Italy, but in Ukraine, uh, for Not example, like to... The no, 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 I mean... Ah, through the city, yes. The, there is a directive from uh, EU, so there is mm -hmm. a European regulation. Uh, I mean the physical works. Mm -hmm. So the yes. physical works uh, in Ukraine, to register a physical work in Ukraine, you have to do a very long pass. Uh, through the government and Ministry of Culture and blah, 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 and this mm -hmm. circle that is never ending. Yes. Uh, so for the physical work, yeah. Uh, so NFT, it helps uh, to uh, shorter this circle. So you just, you just yes. you mint it in the NFT, and then you sell the rights and the collector sells the rights and it is very transparent and it's very useful. And I think that NFTs are a uh, perfect instrument for all the intellectual properties at all not only for paintings or not only for uh, literally um, texts uh, but also for everything so mm -hmm. okay yeah and, and and this problem of uh of the the property we can also associate the the nfts with uh, a smart contract right which is not actually a contract, but uh, there can be a code that uh, in the in the work of art itself, that when the, there is a transfer of ownership, the actual owner of the, 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 the work of art receives, I don't know, X percent of the profit. So this, this can be uh, automatically made, which would be quite secure again. But of course, uh, anyone, if you have just both the physical work of art and the digital work of art, 
uh, there's nothing preventing anyone from stealing the physical wood and se selling it in the black market. But again, this yeah, but I, I do, can do, do the, the same with NFT. I can I can just take a picture or a photo on an exhibition and mint it by myself. Uh, so this uh, uh, doesn't mean that I cannot steal it. But uh, as about uh, the uh, X percent or 10 percent that an author gets every time that the sale is going on, this would be this could be very useful for Facebook retweets. <laughs> so, every time that your post has been uh, forwarded, you can get 10 percent. That would be great. We should tell Mark Zuckerberg about it. <laughs> Even if it would be just one cent, right? It would be great. It would be great, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Be good idea. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, given the, the the time, I ask you if there are, if there are any final statements, Miss Lika, Miss Gio, Mister Gio. Well, again, I'd like to thank you both for your speeches, for your lecture. Quite interesting. Very, very good. Uh, you are very good speakers. Very eloquent. And um, both of your works and projects are very interesting. Uh, I'm certain that I will reach both of you and um, hopefully uh, our view viewers will do so too. And uh, again, thank you. I'd like to thank again to the International Law Association for making this event possible. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you very thank much. You very much. Thank, thank you. you. I actually don't know how to. <laughs> I don't know how to disconnect, but uh, how to stop? Do we just leave? Yeah. Yes, I think. Uh, Have a nice day. Awesome. Thank you very much. It's you nice, nice travel for you too. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye bye.